Hello guys and girls. Today we're responding to another comment. It was relevant to the last video, so I thought it would be a worthy continuation. It's regarding chords again. And Zef wants to know how to do chords like Illenium. And also wanted to know how to spice up those progressions too. I do know Illenium stuff quite well. Not the guy, personally, obviously. I mean, the music. Who doesn't? Now, I know Illenium is technically future bass, but he's not fooling anyone. These are pop tracks, especially the chord progressions. So let's get stuck in. Now, upon studying Illenium, anyone with uh, trained ears should recognize that he is a big fan of what has become known as the Axis progression. So called because a group called the Axis of Awesome went viral with a comedy sketch showcasing how most pop tracks use the same four chord progression and in fact managed to squeeze a medley of 50 ish songs together in space of five minutes over said progression. If you've not seen that, link in the description, thoroughly worth a watch. So, what is this progression? In a minor key, it's one, six, three, seven. Or if you view it from a major perspective, this would be one, five, six, four. Probably the reason it's such a universally used progression is you can view it in either major or minor. Flavor wise, none of the progression gives away distinctly minor or major. That would actually be more down to whatever melody or hook ends up over this. So let's start with our 1637. Again, I'm working in A, so we don't have to memorize the minor scale. And as I said in the first EDM theory video, don't worry about key. In fact, looking at Illenium's tracks, he doesn't appear to have a preference either. It's most probably determined by whichever vocalist he's working with. So let's build our triads as usual. Now the first Illenium style trick is to revoice this chord so that the second note is at the top. So we take our second note and we move it to the octave above. And straight away that gives us much more of a melodic voicing. Next I just want to add some interest to the rhythm. Now, Illenium doesn't always do this. As with anything, it will be dependent on the context of what you're trying to produce too. Here, this is purely an aesthetic choice, but I like the sound when these two chords are a beat early. Now, one thing Illenium sometimes does is use an inversion on the chord seven which is a fairly common use because it gives the bass line a kind of melody fall like this. Let me just put the root note back in to complete the chord. Another thing Illenium sometimes does is what's called chord substitution. Let me just double this progression and we'll do one on the second time round. A substitution is exactly as it sounds, substituting one chord for another. In a musical sense, however, it's most common to choose chords that share notes. So for the last chord here, we're going to substitute in chord five instead of seven. And if you remember how we built chords on the scale with the press one, miss one, press one, miss one, press one rule, you can see any chord that is two away will share two notes so it's highly likely to still work when you substitute it in. Okay, so we've got a nice progression now, but Zef wants to know where does the spice come from? We have several options, but let me just prefix this by saying, as a professional musician, my first advice to you is don't use fancy chords just because you know fancy chords. Always read the room, as it were. Or another phrase I like is, it's not your wedding. 
always serve the song, not your own ego. Having said that, if you want to play with different emotions, let me give you some options. Now, Elenium does like his ninths, and there are two flavors, what we call Ad Nine and Sus Two. Ad Nines are exactly as they sound. You just add the ninth in, no seventh. And that sounds like this. Now, as you can hear, that sounds great until the chord five. So let's not use that one. In fact, we can use the ninth from the chord before it was substituted, like we have the first time around. Yeah, that's much better. That would be technically a add 11th on that chord, but it's just a name. We know how we got there and it sounds good. Now a sus2 chord is actually very similar to a 9, because when you think about it, we only have seven notes in our scale, as most do. If you count up to nine, that is note two. But the reason we call them ninths is because they're stacked on top of the third, the fifth, the seventh, etc. A sus2 is so called because it's not stacked on top of anything. The sus stands for suspended, and the two is replacing the three in the scale. So this chord is made up of one, two, and five. And they're called suspended because they inherently desire to resolve back to the normal chord. But if we voice them like we did the first time round by moving the second note of the chord to the top, they can still sound cool, even if they are suspenseful. You see? Pretty cool. Now, none of these are hard rules. Obviously, you don't have to use one rule all the way through the progression. You can pick sus twos for some chords, ninths for others, and by playing with the extensions and alterations and the voicings, you can find cool melodies. Anyway, I hope that helps someone. There is more to say, but the next Illenium trick comes more under melody writing and arrangement. If anyone's curious, we can go into that on the next video. But until then, I just have to say, if you liked it, please leave me a like. If you loved it, please leave me a sub. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.